Okay, so again, the seven heads of the beast are here. Babylonians 1, Persia 2, Greece 3, Syria 4, Egypt 5, Turkey 6, and Roman Empire 7. Um, but at the time that this right here was written, the Roman Empire is was ruling. So when it says that five are fallen and one is, and the other has not yet come, it means Babylon, Persia, Greece, Syria, and Egypt were the five that had already fallen at the time that the book of Revelation was written. Um, and the one is refers to the Roman Empire because it was in power when John wrote this. And the one that had not yet come may refer to the Turkish Empire right here, which actually came into power at the end of the Eastern Roman Empire. So, I mean, it existed here, but it came into its full power at the end of the Eastern Roman Empire. Um, so the Turkish Empire is better known as the Ottoman Empire. It's listed here as beginning in 1299, but it became an empire um, in 1453 with the conquest of Constantinople. So the rise of the Turkish Empire corresponded with the end of the Eastern Roman Empire. And it's listed here because the Turkish region was one of the four heads of the leopard during the Hellenistic period. Um, but it didn't become an empire until the end of the Eastern Roman Empire. So five have fallen, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Syria, and Egypt. One is, that's Rome, when, when the book of Revelation was written. And one has not come, that's the Turkish Empire, which rose after the Eastern Roman Empire. So five have fallen, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Syria, and Egypt. One is Rome, one is not yet come, the Turkish Empire. Okay, so um, that that's a fairly accepted theory. It's not something that's new. And the only problem that I have with that theory is this statement here that says it will continue a short space after it comes to the other that has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. The problem is, even if you were to only count from 1453, when the Turkish um, Empire actually became an empire, even if you were to only count from that point, that's, it still lasted over 400 years. And you can see by the number of years that each of these empires endured that 400 years is not a short space in comparison to the other the others i mean it's it's short compared to the roman empire which lasted almost 1900 years but the turkish empire lasting 400 years it lasted longer than the neo-babylonian empire the persian empire and the greek empire um so while i originally agreed with that theory i'm beginning to question it now um and this translation can also read and he must abide in a small space. That's another possible explanation, but that doesn't apply to the Turkish Empire either because as you can see here, they had the whole region around the Mediterranean Sea east of Italy, and that's not a small space. And it wasn't for a short time either. So that led me to question again who these seven kings really are because the riddle is clear five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he will continue a short time or occupy a small space. So five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he will either abide in a small place or continue a short time. Okay. So as I said, I don't see how it could be the Turkish Empire. But another possibility is that the book of Revelation was actually written not in 95 CE, like scholars believe um, during the Western Roman Empire, but instead, maybe it was written during the Holy Roman Empire. And if that's the case, then the five that have fallen could be Babylon, Persia, Greece, 
and the Western and Eastern Roman empires. And the one that is would be the Holy Roman Empire. And the one that hadn't come yet would be the one that we're in right now. And um, that's if the one that is refers to the Holy Roman Empire. I mean, that could make sense because the next one after that lasts only a short time. And that's what it says. And, and since we're told in Daniel that the prophecy will be complete 70 Shabuah after the decree to restore Jerusalem, which happened in 1947, then that might, this might actually be the short time that it's referring to. So the United Nations might actually be the restoration of that beast, the one that hadn't come yet, the eighth king. And we've talked about this before, but this is the Roman flag right here. And this is the flag of the United Nations. So you can see the branches here look just like the Roman flag, except the center eagle has been replaced by the whole world. And these scriptures right here tell us that the fourth beast right here shall devour the whole earth. He shall enter peaceably Daniel 11 and by peace shall destroy many Daniel 8 and then Revelation 13 who is able to make war with him so that sounds like the UN to me so um, Daniel 7 right here refers to the fourth beast which is the beast with 10 horns and Daniel 11 is referring to the to the king of the north which probably refers to a place to the north of Israel, since that is apparently where Daniel was living. And all of Europe is north of Israel in terms of latitude. So the king of the north who comes in peaceably, well, it could still be the UN because the UN was founded in Europe. And you can see the UN itself was established in 1945, but it was a replacement for the League of Nations and the forerunner of the League of Nations was the Interparliamentary Union, which was established by two men from France and the United Kingdom. And this was established in 1889. And the Concert of Europe, which is also mentioned here as an origin of the League of Nations, began in 1815 at the end of the Napoleonic wars so this wound of the beast only seemed to be the end of the empire it, it actually continued um, literally in the name of peace after that so the roman empire that lasted almost 1900 years was not going to die easily the final phase of it which was the holy roman empire was dissolved by get this emperor francis in Emperor Francis II in 1806. So Francis is the name our new Pope took. He took that name. And this convergence movement calling Christians back to their primitive roots, which is the Holy Roman Empire, of course, where everybody was Catholic by force, it dissolved in 1806. And the Pope was taken prisoner by the country of Italy in 1870. But right after it was dissolved in 1806, the Concert of Europe formed, which led to the Interparliamentary Union, which led to the League of Nations, which led to the United Nations. So this map right here shows every country in the world that is a member of the UN. It's every country in blue. So you can see it's the whole world. And that's why the whole world is on their flag. So the UN may very well be the king of the north that comes in peaceably mentioned in Daniel 11. And Daniel, and Daniel 8 is talking about the king of fierce countenance that comes out of the four kingdoms that come out of the king of Greece. So we've talked about this in depth in the video, The Dragon, the Beast, and the Harem. But the king of Greece was Alexander the Great and his empire was separated into four sections after his death so that's what it's referring to here and these are the names of the four sections right here that alexander's greek empire was divided into um there's a map right here 
And this is a close up of the map. You can see Macedonia in green right here, which is now Greece. And the Turkish region, which is in orange. The yellow region here, which includes Syria at the closest point to Israel. And the purple region, which is Egypt in the south. So this final king or kingdom will be in the north, namely north of Israel. And it will stand up in the latter time, right here in verse 23. Um, this king stands up in the latter time of those four kingdoms. Well, those four kingdoms still exist, only the names have changed. I mean, it clearly says in verse 19, I will make you know what shall be in the last end of the indignation at the time appointed the end shall be. And then down here in verse 25, it says, This king shall also fight against the prince of princes, which we know is Christ, who returns at the very, very end. So this king that it's talking about is not rising right after Alexander. This king or kingdom, because we know the word is used interchangeably in Daniel, this king or kingdom will rise right, af right before Christ returns. It clearly says that. So this is what many people call the Antichrist. Um, so, and, and like I said, it could also be a kingdom because in Daniel 7, it says the four beasts are four kings right here in verse 17. But then in verse 23, it says um, the fourth beast is a kingdom. So the word king can also mean kingdom. That's the point here. Um, and that kingdom will devour the whole earth. We know that. So um, so in Daniel 8, when it says the final king shall stand up, it may also refer to a kingdom, a whole government. Um, and this kingdom will stand up in the latter time of the four kingdoms. So right here, the four kingdoms stand up out of the the greek nation that's the the four kingdom that's that we looked at and in the latter time of their kingdom a king of fierce countenance will stand up or a kingdom of fierce countenance will stand up it could be either one so we're talking about the time that's really important um so it's referring to these four kingdoms right here that the Greek empire was split into and in the latter time of these four kingdoms right before Christ returns this king or kingdom will arise it doesn't say that the king comes out of or originates in these areas that's not what it says it says that it rises during the latter time of these kingdoms right here okay so let's just look at each of these four empires um, that it was broken up to the into the first one, um, which is now Greece, was known as the Kingdom of Macedonia, and you can see it ended in 168 BC. And the kingdom that covered where Syria is now um, was known as the Seleucid, Seleuc Seleucid Empire, and it ended in 63 BC. Um, the kingdom of Egypt right here was known as the Ptolemaic kingdom and it ended in 30 BC and the Turkish kingdom um, was known as the kingdom of Pergamon or the Adelid dynasty and it officially ended in 133 BC but it began rising in power again in 1299 and became an outright empire um, at the defeat of Constantinople in 1453 at the end of the Eastern Roman Empire here. And that Turkish Empire did not dissolve until 1923. So the latter end of these four empires right here is actually 1923 because that's when the last of the four empires died out. And that's what Daniel 8 says, verse 22. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, the Greek empire, right here. And in the latter time of their kingdom, a king of fierce countenance will stand up. Okay, so I have to start the next part 
right here. The link is below.